just took a step backwards this week. We're now back up to some fairly overcast and grey and cool conditions again. Yeah, so uh, last Monday um, I fished a match down on Carp Gap Beach and literally from lunchtime Monday the weather changed from fairly settled to blustery massive northeast wind came in, whipped the swell up and it was almost unfishable. So even down into Suffolk the conditions have been fairly uh, blustery the sea conditions have not been ideal. So that brings me to today. So it's a really early start for me today, it's 6, 6 30 in the morning and I'm heading down the A140. Um, destination today is Felixstowe. I haven't made my mind up yet where I'm going to fish when I get to feel it, so what I'll probably do is go in at one end and drive along and have a look. Uh, there's about six marks potentially where I can get parked up and fish fairly comfortably today. With the wind conditions at Felix, though, that should put the wind on my back. Um, journey time is going to be about 90 minutes. Tide is somewhere just around about 10 high tide. So, what I shall do is probably get an hour and a half fishing up and then fish it down. An alternative plan today may be that I fish one end in the morning, it's depending on how the fishing conditions are going, i.e., your weed and whether you're actually catching anything. I may then, at lunchtime, pack up and move to a different mark give you some idea of the layout. As you can see, been through some pretty grim weather on the way here this morning, and now just arrived at the seafront. And make my way along first of all. So this is, I think, the area they call Mannings, which is all the amusements, and then we've got a couple of car parks just up here on the left. Probably going to go in the one they call Manor Terrace. So there's no shortage of car parks. You should always be able to find somewhere to park. We'll get very busy in the summer, obviously. And as we come along the seafront there in front of the amusements, you can see all the uh, on the side of the road parking there. So, so your spot for choice, really. I do believe that the car park is down here. This is Manor Terrace. There's toilets here, I believe, as well. Yes. Let's just go over and have a look and see what we've got here. There's pay to park there. So it's another pay car park. Just over there where you can see that house in the centre. There's a big car park there with a little toilet block. And then there's steps in front there to get down on the beach. There's someone already fishing there. So what I decided to do was come along to the next set of steps which is here. You can see up there there's several, three or four more bays up there. And what I've done is dropped in this one towards this corner. As I say, the tide's almost at high tide now. In the next hour, I would have thought. I'll check when I get my phone ready. Uh, so I'm going to sit up and give it a try here. You can see in the far distance, there's right around that's all old Felix still over there. 
and maybe later on we might have a drive down the other end and have a look at some of the other marks but I'm going to start off here today I've quickly thrown the shelter up because I actually arrived in a bit of a rainstorm so first things first nice and comfortable all my gears in there now just a question now of setting up a few rods and uh, giving it a bash the conditions here I mean, you can see there's no swell whatsoever it's barely a ripple uh, I've just been down and put a bucket in there to get some water it, it is a little bit clear but um, yeah we'll see yeah it's a nice comfortable spot not too far to walk parking this morning for me is four pound all day so that is very reasonable I don't mind doing that short walk to the car a nice easy walk as well there's no sort of humping your gear for miles so right let's get some gear ready uh, later on I'll go through some of the other marks that are around this area as I say there's half a dozen all within a fairly short space here which is good so while I'm waiting for some of the other baits to defrost I've got a partially defrosted whole mini squid there and I've mounted that on a single 3.0 Mustad Viking little bait stop there that's going on the up and over rig and I'm going to get that one out first That's the first one out, a nice gentle lob up into the wind, and that's flown out. So I'll get the other rig ready now. As I say, it's going to be a two hook clip down, slightly smaller baits, and then we'll get that one out as well. Okay, we're fishing, both rods are out. Uh, the left hand rod, I say, slightly smaller rig on there, it's that two hook loop rig I use a lot, size one hooks. So I've got on the bottom hook a squid and mackerel cocktail and on the top hook I've got a fresh black just tipped with a tiny little bit of squid to keep it on. Now I've put that one out in the middle of the bay not as far out as the other one. Um, just checked on the tides and I've got around about 35 minutes to high tide so where I've set up looks to be about right. It's going to probably reach the bottom of the rod rest. I'm set up on a little bit of high shingle here so I did anticipate it coming up to the bottom of that so 35 minutes of flood we'll have a little bit of a lull then, then we'll fish the edge so once you're behind the shelter here and also you've obviously got the bonus of the um, sea wall it is quite a sheltered little spot okay so while it's flooding the water's flowing from left to right and I've got that for about another half an hour then it'll flow the other way that'll give me much more room to work with I don't want to really put this right hand rod too far out in case it wraps around the end of this uh, brick work on the, on the right here species today it's going to be your usual um, whiting I would have thought you're going to pick up dogfish it is calm enough for a ray I would say today um, I'm always more confident fishing for them at night but you do see them coming up here during the day so as I always say each week you never know obviously this morning I've come straight down into Felix so off the A14 headed for the seafront but there's as I said briefly this morning there's probably five or six maybe even more marks that you can actually head for when you come down here and they've all got sort of various names um, if I start from nearest to where I am because just behind me is the port of Felix though with all the containers and everything so immediately to my right is Langard Point now some of that has been fenced off as a nature reserve I believe you can still go through there and fish you've got to be a bit careful apparently there's some signs up down there now but um, yeah that, that Langard Point there's a pull on the right hand rod already coming left towards Felix though you've got where I am fishing today which is Manor Terrace and what I'll do is I'll put all the postcodes for the car parked up on the map there and you can see them 
pick out which one you want. There's on off the side of the road parking all the way along the front of Manning's. And then you can head out the other side of Felixstowe, what they call Old Felixstowe. Uh, and you're heading up towards a mark called Fludgers, which basically is a hotel. So in front of there, you've got some parking on the street again and straight over the top and you're on the beach very similar setup to what we've got here little bays i might have a drive down there later on to have a look so then we head towards golf golf road is the next one got toilets at a lot of these places as well which is handy um, not too far to walk with none of them either sometimes it can be like 50 50 meters from where you park your car to where you're fishing uh, then on carrying on along the coastline you'll come to the dip another very popular mark and then finally up that end cliff road now i've had a brief look this morning at the car parks where i've parked this morning in uh, manor terrace it's four pound all day and, you, and they use the uh, ringo parking app i think there's machines in there as well and i believe they're all very much the same i think they're all going to be around four pound a day whether that changes in the holiday season i'm not sure but definitely now as, as we're fishing mid-april four pound all day so that's a sort of basic layout i'll as i say i'll put the map up there so you can see where these various marks are in relation to where i'm fishing they're, they're all going to fish fairly similar i would have thought it just gives you the option if you turn up at one of these marks and it's busy packed you can't get on you haven't really got to go that far before you can get into another one so yeah, i think i'm going to check that right hand rod that's been out the longest had a few, few little pulls on it early on I'm going to give that a bait change anyway. The uh, herring's now defrosted. So I've got a nice wrap of herring there ready to go on. First one of the day. I don't expect it's going to be the last, but fish first pass. Can't grumble at that. It's getting put back. He's away and took the whole mini squid, so I'm not going to get that uh, herring on there now and get that bang back out. So I've quickly switched it over to a, just a, a basic two hook flapper. It's the same thing really, it's just not clipped. Uh, put small baits back on that and I've dropped that in the middle of the bay again, not too far out. Big rods now fishing a herring. What I might do though, if I don't, um, if the little scratching rod don't sort of pick up, I'll change it over to a pulley panel as well. Or I would hope to maybe produce a little flatty or something on the uh, scratching gear. Right, that left hand rod's gone slack, so I'm gonna give it a check.
be interested to see what that plane lead does, whether it pulls right round or whether it finds a little dip in the bottom. That's the actual idea of it. Tiny little bit of, it's actually picked up a tiny little bit of fishing tackle, some line. I felt it on the way back in, snag up. A little bit of slow, gentle pressure and that pulled out. So I will try and cast a little bit more to the left. I think there's probably at the end of this groin there's been some gear lost and that's maybe sticking out. So worth bearing in mind that. Just notice that um, right hand rod, which is out fairly long, is now pulling well to the left. So I assume the ebb started, and it's quite quite a fierce pull on that. So now I can afford to cast out virtually in front of me again, knowing that the um, the ebb tide is going to pull it away from that snag. Knock it on the uh, the other rig, so I'm now. Put a little scratching rig out for another try and I'll rebate this little pulley well actually it's a little pattern oster I'll rebate that with another herring and squid cocktail quite surprised there hasn't been a few more dogfish when you get one that early it tends to sort of spell that you might get a few the other thing I'm now going to do as well is put a grip lead into this other rig just to make sure it stays where I want it. I'm not sure if that's a bite on the left hand rod or the wind. Every now and again we get quite a big gust. It's got the little flapper rig on the left hand rod. I'm quite surprised I haven't had sort of a whiting or even a flatfish on them tiny little bait. Let's give that right hand rod a check. about half past 11 now and it's gone a little bit slow to be honest with you With that little flurry of bites at the very start um, I had a dogfish first cast on one rod messed around with the rigs and that on the other two on the other rod changing the rigs different hook sizes different bait sizes and having a search around in this bay nothing really materialized so I've ended up putting both baits on bigger baits single hooks 
and putting one out quite a way and the other one slightly shorter and what I have found is the rod that I've been punching out quite a way to go past the end of the groin on my left picking up a lot more tide as soon as I get out there it's pulling around quite a lot um, which has not been a problem because it's eventually as dug in but what I found is every time I go to bring it back it seems like I'm in some sort of clay or something there. there's a bite on the left hand rod now um, it seems like I'm in some sort of clay and I gra gradually ease it out by uh, locking everything up and slowly walking back and you can feel it tension in tension and you can feel it slip then it comes out so definitely looks like I've got a bite on the left hand rod and let that develop a bit more got my next rig so I'll quickly hook that up ready so as that comes in the next one can go out and keep a bait in the water as much as possible Very strange that rod had been nodding away for quite a few minutes. Nothing there. Plenty of hook point exposed. Don't know why that didn't hook up. There you go. I can't believe this. Every, t every time I pick my lunch box up, one of the rods goes. Oh, that's the right hand one this time. That must be the same old theory as the um, the flask when I'm uh, pike fishing. If it's a slow old day and you're struggling for a bite, just get the flask out. The minute you're halfway through pouring that coffee, away it go. That's left hand rod's now gone slack. Some leads investigating. Bare hook on the right hand rod. Knock it on the left again, and yet that has gone slack. So strange. What I might do with the other rod is I might try and put in a big bunch of worm on. I've got some lovely fresh blacks here to use up. It'd be a shame to take them back not the freezing. They are much better when they're fresh. And these are some real beauties. There you go. Two blacks on there. Plenty of hook showing. That'll be going out next. Quite surprised really that the um, worm baits have come back all morning virtually untouched. Not even a single whiting. No, I shouldn't speak too soon, I suppose. Well, they certainly got the weather right today. They said changeable. And I think I've been through virtually everything but snow in the last hour. They're quite a heavy uh, rain shower. Skies went jet black. That passed through had a little couple of light showers and now the sun's come out blazing hot again on the fishing front it's quietened down quite a bit now bites are very hard to come by uh, I've put a bunch of blacks on the left hand rod and punched it out as far as I can and refreshed the right hand rod with a squid and mackerel cocktail on there this time and that's a little bit closer in but as I say the bites seem to have dried up quite a bit I was getting lots of bites in between. I've, I've only had three dogfish today, but I've had probably nine or ten bites. Proper real rob rattlers. 
and pick them up and there's nothing there. I've gone down a size hook on one of the rigs to try, that, that didn't help. Still got a couple of decent bites, no hookups. So I've gone the other way, I've gone with a bigger hook. Now, I don't know if the bigger hook's put them off completely because I'm, I'm not getting any bites now. What I might do in the next half an hour is pack up here, shoot down the road and probably go to one of the other marks, either the dip or up by the golf course, somewhere up there. Have a look, see what the conditions are like, see what the beach is like, and I might have a couple of hours up there. Okay, so I've been for a bit of a scout around. I did originally plan to go down to the dip, but when I got down there, there's only about five spaces and they're all gone. So I've now made my way to the Fludgers Hotel. And as you can see, from the road here to the beach, it's literally yards. They're all set out in these rocky bays. A little bit narrower than where I was, but still nice and comfortable. And at the moment, the way things have gone, that black sky is gone. I'm probably just going to pitch up here and have an hour or two here. I don't even need to put the shelter up at the moment. It's completely sheltered from the wind. Uh, I've got no idea what it's going to be like in the middle of these bays, but there's only one way to find out. So as I say, I popped down to see if I could get in at the dip uh, and that looked really nice down there. Very similar to this with the rock reefs uh, from individual little bays. Parking again was literally the same distance as here. You can see where the cars are, straight onto your beach, a few steps up there. There was a nice little kiosk there as well, drinks and ice creams and stuff I expect. Uh, unfortunately the little lay-by which is right next to there it should hold about five or six cars but um, three cars have managed to take up the whole lay-by by parking inconsiderately really you couldn't quite get in between what they'd left the gaps what they'd left so I give that as a bad job I then moved along to Golf Road which was the next access point and basically that looked okay again car park was uh, another Ringo pay so I've drove along to this say the Fludgers Hotel which is over there someone recommended this to me as a nice comfortable easy venue and it certainly well is uh, I'm stuck right up against the rocks here so any slight bit of weed, uh, wind that is coming through is blocked it's like a little sun trap here today it's probably not the best for fishing but as I say I'm gonna give it an hour See if I can't um, catch something out of this bay. As I say, it's turned into a cracking day now for sunbathing. But there you go. What I'm going to do is give that another five minutes, switch that rig over to the uh, three hook clipped, and that'll give me like three options rather than have um, two rods out. I'll have three hooks, three hooks ready to go back out. Well folks, this certainly wasn't part of the plan, a suntan on, on a day like today when I set out from Norwich this morning in all that rain and arrived at uh, Manor Terrace with it still raining, overcast and spitting. I didn't think I'd be sitting here in basically t-shirt weather. Quarter to three in the afternoon. So I've had about three quarters of an hour here. I'm going to give it another ten minutes and then probably make tracks and head for home. Haven't had a touch here. I just don't think the uh, bright sun's doing me any favours. Might have expected maybe a little flatty or something. Or a blind whiting. But yeah, it's not ideal. It's literally not a ripple on it now. So yeah. Another 10 minutes, I'm going to have a pack down. It's certainly given me food for thought, Felix Doe. Got so many different marks and access points. That'll probably take three videos to cover all of it, so that's probably what I'll do. When I come down again next, I'll go to another one of the marks and then uh, add them to the library. So, if I don't catch enough of it in the next 10 minutes, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.